This is the world's smallest telephoto zoom lens for Sony E-mount cameras. It's the Tamron 70-300 f4.5-6.3 lens. So how does this lens live up to the hype, and should you buy it? Let's find out. This lens is made to be used on full-frame cameras, but you can use it on an APS-C crop sensor camera. The only catch is that if you were to do that, then your field of view gets cropped down to 105 to 450 millimeters instead of 70 to 300. So you get more of a zoomed-in effect, and that can actually be a good thing if you're looking for more of a zoom range out of this lens for like wildlife photography. Besides its compact and lightweight build, more on that later, the biggest appeal of this lens is its price point. At 550 US dollars, the Tamron 7300 is more than half the price of the Sony version. For comparison's sake, the Sony version is the Sony 7300 f4.5 to 5.6. It has a slightly faster f-stop, and it also comes with built-in lens stabilization. However, it's a lot larger, heavier, and more expensive than the Tamron version. So if budget, size, and weight are a concern, then the Tamron lens is the way to go. This lens was announced in September 2020, and it comes on the coattails of some of Tamron's most impressive new releases, such as the 20-200 f2.8-5.6 all-in-one zoom. So one of the only reasons why you may not opt for this lens is if you prefer that all-in-one Tamron 20-200 lens instead. I did a separate video of that lens with lots of sample footage and photos, and basically that lens is a lot smaller and also slightly more expensive, but it does give you a much wider focal range at the expense of not being able to zoom in as far as 300 millimeters. So the choice between those two lenses is definitely a tough one. The 20 to 200 is probably better as an all-in-one lens as Tamron markets it because you can just cover a wider range of scenarios. But if you're shooting more wildlife or something where you really need to get super detailed zoomed in shots, then that 300 millimeters on the 70 to 300 is gonna be a lot more valuable to you. So it depends on what you're going to be shooting the most. If you've used any recent Tamron lenses, then the 7300 is going to feel really familiar in your hands. It has a similar look and feel to other Tamron lenses, and it also takes a 67mm front lens filter, just like many of those other Tamron lenses do as well. That comes in really handy if you use polarizers or ND filters. You know, if you're dedicated to the Sony lenses, then those filter sizes are all over the place. But with Tamron, run, they're really sticking to one, maybe two different lens filter sizes. So that makes it a lot cheaper in the long run if you're a filter user. The build quality of this lens is mostly plastic with the exception of the zoom barrel and the manual focus ring here. But with that said, this lens is still weather sealed and it has dust and moisture resistance built into the lens. So you can use it in a wide variety of outdoor situations. By far the biggest advantage of this Tamron 70-300 besides its low price point is its compact size. It has a weight of 545 grams or 1.2 pounds and a length of 5.8 inches when it's retracted. So when this lens is on your camera, I was using it with a Sony a7R 3 it's really easy to forget that you're hauling a rather long-range telephoto lens on your camera. The small size also makes it a lot easier to hold the lens up for long periods of time, especially compared to using a bigger lens like a 100 to 400 millimeter. And I can tell you that my arms and shoulders are really liked holding this lens instead. I was trying to photograph some owls the other day, and this lens, I could hold it up for a lot longer than I could with a 100 to 400 lens. On that note, let's talk about ease of use. So the Tamron 70-300 is a really straightforward lens. It has a zoom ring and a manual focus ring, but other than that, there are no buttons or switches on the lens which does lead me to a weak spot. It would be really nice to have a lens lock switch on the lens to prevent the zoom barrel from sliding out. It didn't happen all the time, but it definitely happened on occasion. And it's not necessarily a deal breaker, but just something to be aware of when you're using this lens. This is an autofocus lens, so when pairing it with my Sony a7R 3 I found that all of my autofocus modes, including eye autofocus and face detect, were super snappy, and it was like using a native Sony lens on my camera. 
I have to say that a lot of third-party lenses, including Tamron and Sigma, have really caught up in their technology. So even though their price points are lower and sometimes their build qualities are less, the experience of using these lenses on a Sony camera is really similar to using a native Sony lens. When it comes to picture quality for both photos and videos, the quality was super sharp and the color rendition was really accurate. There is pretty much no chromatic aberration or distortion when using this lens. And even though this lens doesn't have a super fast aperture of say f2.8 or f1.8, you can still get bokeh or that smooth, creamy, blurred out background as long as you shoot your subjects from a distance. This lens also has a really nice minimum focusing distance of 31 and a half inches or 0.8 meters. This allows you to get pretty close up to your subject and still get everything crisp and in focus, similar to using a macro lens. So what are the best uses of this lens and who is it for? Given its focal range and features, the 7300 is best used as a complementary lens to a wide angle or mid-range zoom, such as the 24 to 70. Shooting purely at 7300 might suit some photography styles, but most people, including myself, will occasionally want to get a shot wider than 70 millimeters, which is when having that spare lens comes in handy. I'll show you some waterfall photos here. So when I was trying to shoot solely with the 70 to 300, this was as wide of a shot as I could get, and I couldn't back up any further. Like that was physically as far away from the waterfall as I could get. So I luckily had my phone with me. So when I wanted that wider shot, I just pulled out my phone and got a wider shot, but it would have been really nice to have a wider angle lens so I could capture the full waterfall. However, you can still use the 70 to 300 as your sole lens and get some really great shots. So I challenged myself on several weekend trips to only use a 70-300 and it came in really handy when shooting wildlife, landscapes, and portrait shots. The only catch is that you have to make sure that there's enough lighting or you have a camera that can shoot at high ISOs given the slower lens aperture on this lens. If you plan to shoot mostly indoors or in low lighting, the Tamron 70-180 to f2.8 is probably better for your needs. That lens is a lot bigger and heavier and more expensive. I did another video reviewing that lens and it's a really fantastic lens, especially if you need that faster f2.8 aperture because it will do a lot better in low lighting than the 7300 will. The Tamron 7300 can also be a great video lens. You just have to note that it lacks image stabilization or IS. So it's best used on a tripod or a gimbal stabilizer if you're shooting video. Or you may want to look into the more expensive Sony version of this lens because it does have OSS or optical steady shot, which is Sony's version of IS built into that lens. So in conclusion, for the budget conscious and those wishing to have the smallest and lightest camera kit available, then the Tamron 70-300 is a bargain of a lens. It's so lightweight and the image quality I think was really stunning for both photos and videos. But now I'd love to hear what you think. Would you buy this Tamron 70-300 lens or would you opt for another one such as a 28-200? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content relating to mirrorless cameras, GoPro vlogging, and taking photos and videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.